So today I'm going to cover a childhood disease. Um, why would I do that on a heart attack, stroke, um, death and disability uh, prevention channel? Well, it's linked, believe it or not. Um, some of you may have already guessed uh, what I'm talking about. Um, this is actually a significant cause of um, of disability and uh, it does cause death uh, in middle-aged and older folks even though it is a childhood disease. Let me clarify what I mean by childhood disease. These are diseases that are usually caused by viruses. Um, the virus is prevalent meaning you find it around a lot. It Almost everybody's susceptible to it and it's very infectious meaning we're all going to get it as kids unless we've had a vaccine which prevents it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, yes, I'm talking about measles, German measles, um, chicken pox. Oh, yes, I'm talking about chicken pox today. But, uh, first, a, a brief introduction. Ford Brewer, F-O-R-D, Brewer, B-R-E-W-E-R. -E and again, this is a prevention channel. We talk about preventing death, uh, disease, and disability in uh, 40, 50, 60, uh, 70 year olds and older. So why would I be talking about a childhood disease, chicken pox? Varicella zoster, that's the virus right there. And when I mention varicella zoster, you may start getting the, the clue. And you may be thinking, um, well, yeah, I've heard of zoster. It's shingles. Um, <clears throat> I didn't know that was a cause of heart attack and stroke. Well, yes it is. These are all different pictures of chicken pox. That's about how I looked when I had chicken pox um, a few decades ago. But here's what's happening. <clears throat> with the other um, childhood diseases, again, our body wiped them out. With chicken pox, our body doesn't exactly wipe it out. What it does was it is it tames it. It makes it go dormant. The chickenpox virus actually crawls back through our nerves into our spinal cords and lives in our nerve ganglion for the rest of our lives. That's one of the reasons they're recommending vaccine these days. But as we get older and our immune system begins to get weaker, this, um, this dormant varicella zoster virus can crawl back out through the nerve root ganglion and cause, or through the nerve, and cause what we call shingles. Many of you have seen this in uh, older pre people and even middle-aged people. Interesting and classic distribution. That's called a, ner a dermatome distribution. And in other words, there's a specific nerve that innervates this section of skin. So that's why shingles goes to an area like that. But <clears throat> here's another, uh, another interesting and fun view. So here's the spinal cord, here's the nerve root ganglion, and here is the uh, varicella zoster virus growing back out to there. Um, by the way, I'll give you a spoiler. This is probably gonna need to be a series because there's a lot of information to cover. And this is not just old information that we all know. Just over the past couple of months, a new vaccine has become available. And there's been significant debate over that vaccine. Uh, that's where this is all leading to. But, <clears throat> first of all, why, is, uh, why can zoster be serious? Um, it can crawl out of uh, optic nerve. Uh, you remember, we said it crawls out of... Um, nerve ganglia. Well, it can also crawl out of our trigeminal nerve, our optic nerve, uh, cranial nerves. And optic, um, optic shingles, ophthalmic shingles, can cause, can be associated with blindness, um, stroke, these, these problems, the uh, zoster in different parts of our body can cause heart attack, stroke, um, blindness, and uh, ophthalmic um, zoster, zoster of the eye, as my grandmother used to say, or, or it's very painful. 
And my grandmother used to say, it hurts so bad. She didn't have it, but she, when she would talk about things that hurt really, really bad, she'd say, it hurts so bad you were afraid you weren't going to die. Uh, and that's what goes on with uh, some of these problems associated with zoster in the cranial nerve areas. Uh, major problems with ears, hearing, again, loss of vision, stroke, um, again, cranial nerve involvement of the zoster um, or shingles impact. This one, again, as I said, I was going to share some, uh, some pictures that are not pretty. This lady doesn't look like she's in a lot of pain. Maybe she's not. Not all, not all of us with, um, if and when we get uh, herpes um, or zoster of the eye have that kind of pain. But many have so much pain that for months they get immense pain anytime they feel wind blowing anywhere near the eye. And this is not severe 70 mile an hour wind. This is feeling the wind as air shifts in their room. So again, <clears throat> this is a little bit more of an issue than, uh, than it may sound. Uh, so let's get back and talk a few minutes about why this is an important issue. There was a, um, a recent um, development in vaccines for Zoster. The old vaccine was uh, called Zostavax. Um, I remember we used to give it at the uh, the little clinic. It typically was about three hundred dollars at that time. Now it's down to about two thirty. Um, there's a new vaccine called Shingrix. I just came home and uh, found out that one of my family members recently had a Shingrix vaccine. Uh, had some significant short-term um, symptoms with it, uh, and that does happen. But um, uh, hopefully we'll have a much less uh, probability of getting uh, zoster and one of these serious forms of zoster as, uh, as they get older. So <clears throat> here's an interesting, um, well, just a, another point. This is a, some more recent research around um, shingles and heart attack and stroke. So again, for those of you who are saying, Oh, wait a minute. Why are you covering chicken pox on, on a heart attack and stroke channel? This is why. Not only does it cause, uh, can it cause heart attack and stroke, and again, this is from the American Car College of Cardiology. This is fairly recent, um, just last year. Um, <clears throat> not only can uh, chicken pox later on in life cause heart attack and stroke, it can cause blindness, uh, severe pain, severe disability, putting people in bed for months due to the pain associated with this. So <clears throat> here's what I, you may say, okay, that's enough of the ugly pictures. I, I get it. I, and I'll stop with the ugly pictures, I think. But um, part of that impact is for the folks that are very nervous and uh, afraid of vaccines. I know there's a huge component, especially in my viewership, of folks that don't want to have any new medication, any new virus uh, vaccine, uh, and I understand why. Uh, and quite often the question is, why do you even recommend? Why, why does the CDC, why do docs go in and recommend these things when they're not totally um, proven? Well, actually, there was a lot of uh, debate over this one. Um, <clears throat> if you go to Neurology Today, January 11, 2018, there was a significant amount of debate regarding how and whether the uh, Vaccine Review Committee would recommend Shingrix. Shingrix is the new vaccine that's um, being recommended by um, the CDC, it, um, vaccine uh, Advisory Committee. Now, <clears throat> it was in a close vote, and I'll put the uh, the link up there. It was a close vote, and I think it's worthwhile going into some of the details on why it was. Um, <clears throat> it was close, 
But experts say the vaccine is a welcome treatment advance. Um, it was an eight to seven vote. Now, why all the, um, why is this seen as a breakthrough yet the advisory uh, uh, practice, uh, vaccine advisory practices committee had an eight to seven close vote? You know what, this is getting long uh, on this video, so I think I'll close this out and do part two. Thank you very much.